also about memory in your computer. You might think of things like DVR modules, VRAM on your graphics and most likely just hard drives and SSDs. But there is actually another type of memory that's incredibly fast and essential to the speed that we have gotten accustomed to with modern computers. I'm talking about CPU cache. No, not the money that you blew on that processor with high foot threading that you didn't really need. We are talking about cache with an E. It's a specialized type of memory that's built into your CPU. But why the heck would your processor need its own memory? Aren't the 16 gigs of RAM or whatever heck you already have in your computer good enough? Well, not really. Honestly, those RAM modules are a heck of a lot faster than say a hard drive in terms of data transfers like a lot faster. But your CPU actually wants data much faster than RAM can even provide. And on top of that, CPUs have gotten faster over the years. They continue to outstrip the typical RAM modules by wider and wider margins. Meaning that without faster memory, your computer is going to be sitting around there doing nothing. Kind of like an unproductive employee. As it waits for RAM and you'll run into bottlenecks. As a result, this is where cache comes. It's unlike system memory that consists of dynamic RAM or DRAM. Your CPU cache is static RAM or SRAM, which is more expensive and takes up more space. But it's much faster than DRAM because it doesn't have to constantly refresh in order to hold data the way DRAM has to be. On an average, the CPU will only have a few megabytes of cache, but it makes a tremendous use of that small amount of memory. You see, when your CPU accesses something from your main system, RAM, it generally stores it in its cache then uses the complex algorithms to guess as to what instructions or data it might need next and fetches those from the system RAM. And well, since these guesses aren't perfect, CPUs suffer from things called cache misses, where it searches its own cache and can't find what it needs and has to access your system memory instead, which slows things down. Fortunately, however, modern processors have gotten pretty good at deciding what to put in their caches as they will typically have a cache hit rate of 80% which means that most of its time the CPU is actually only processing the thing that is in its own cache and doesn't have to bother taking the slower system memory at all and as you may have guessed more cache is advantageous. So when you're shopping for a processor the product page will indicate on how much level 3 or L3 cache is built in with higher end modules having a few extra megabytes and if you're wondering what the heck happened to level 1s and level 2 these are smaller even faster parts of the cache that your CPU will try to hit before looking in your level 3 cache okay look that's cool and all but will better cache give me more XPS in games or faster speeds in my other stuff well that depends on the specific application you can see performance increases kind of overall on CPUs with larger cache. Fortunately though, if you're buying a higher end processor because you need more cores or a higher IPC or better overclocking potential, in general it will probably come with more cache as well. So it's not really something that you need to really think about too much. Of course, if you really want that high end silicon, Make sure that you are paying attention to how much cash with an S you have in your wallet. Speaking of things that are left, is you hitting that like button and subscribing. So, do that.